Hello, everyone. Welcome to your astro weather check for next week's Capricorn full moon part one. So just for our usual time and date stamp reference, I hit record right around 8.50 a.m. on Friday. Today is June 14th. I'm doing this a little bit early ahead of time as I'm taking some time off next week. So I wanted to make sure I got this in to cover the full moon because the energy of mid-June is also going to be kind of part of this astro weather check for today. And it's just a big deal to me because it's the first of two full moons, which hasn't happened in a while, and the same sign. So we'll get to all of that. I'll start off with a couple announcements. I kind of want to dive a little more deeply than we normally do just into the, the astrology of mid-June before we even get to the full moon for today's astro weather check, just because I feel like it's important to do that because the energy is kind of leading up to and then very much infused into the energy of the full moon. And we'll cover all of that. And then I'll pull some cards and we'll wrap up for today. So just to start off with a couple of announcements before we even get into the Astro Weather Check. I want to announce a new class that we have coming up. Jess and I are teaming up again to teach about dragons. So this time around, it's part two kind of of the class that we taught last year in November. And it's called Your Dragon and You. And it will be on Saturday, June 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern. And we're just going to dive more deeply into really techniques and information and ways and just our personal experiences of working more deeply with our dragon energy for personal dragon guides, but also the dragon realm to kind of guide you before our next eclipse season. Eclipse seasons are when the dragon energy is more prevalent anyway. So we want to kind of get everyone trained a little bit more ahead of time because we can work really deeply with our dragons during those times of great change that can come into our lives during eclipses to help us integrate what's going on to help us along the way and what the energies are you know pushing us toward more on path whatever happens during those times is really important to pay very close attention to and sometimes it can feel like you're just like everything gets flipped upside down and you're just sitting there during eclipse season or after like what the hell just happened and our dragons can really help us in those times so we'll go more deeply if we have a bundle and save offer for the first class we did like i said last november and if you register for your dragon and you and you want to learn from like basic dragon information that we presented in that first class We'll give you a coupon code for $5 off of that, which is in our downloadable classes library. So that drops the price of that from 22 down to 17. So I will put a link for that in the episode description for today. If you want to join us, we would love to have you and dive more deeply into your dragon. So we're really excited to be offering that again. And we just love talking about dragons. Jess and I have had pretty incredible experiences. If you're with me you've been with me for a while and got through season one of becoming Chiron you heard my story and how the dragons led me back to astrology and my dragon guides are very 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 integrated in my life and a very integral part of what I'm doing right now so stay tuned for that join us register soon if we don't have anybody registered we're probably not going to do it we'll hold off until uh, maybe closer to eclipse season but we'd love to get everybody on board beforehand so we have a good base of information and education going into eclipse season in the fall, which is the next one. So we have that and the cosmic connection horoscopes that I wrote for the week ahead. So from yesterday up until uh, next week on Wednesday. So that covers pretty much the full moon more personally for you based on your rising sign were released yesterday. So I'll put a link for those in the episode notes as well for the shore local news magazine um, online post for those, but you can also find them in print in your local news magazine. If you're local to the South Jersey area, you can pick your copy up anywhere that you see the short local newsstands, usually restaurants, liquor stores, Wawa's, that kind of thing. So get your hands on the paper copy if you can and enjoy all the other lovely articles and contributions from all the other reporters and writers that are part of the short local team. And if you're not in South Jersey, I will put a link for the online version so you can read your horoscope for the upcoming week ahead, which covers from yesterday up until next Wednesday. So it covers the full moon for you based on your rising sign. 
So I think that that's it for announcements. I will be back with you probably before the new moon in Cancer, early July. There may be another Becoming Chiron episode kind of sprinkled in between. I'm not sure. The next emotion hasn't really come to me yet. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, these are kind of at their own pace at this point regarding the Becoming Chiron episodes. Astro Weather Checks are more on a schedule. And as you know, they're bonus episodes in the podcast feed. So you can find, find Becoming Chiron on your favorite podcast platform, primarily Spotify, And on that platform now, you can give stars and um, make sure you follow the the podcast if you love it and give a star review if you can. I think you can really easily do that now. They've they've just put that into the platform, which is really cool. Also has always been part of the Apple podcast platform and you can find the, the podcast feed on that platform as well. I would love some stars and reviews. I love feedback. Always love to hear what everybody is thinking and digesting and getting from the the episodes that I'm putting out and then also on our Sea Goddess Healing Arts YouTube channel is where you can find the podcast as well as the Astro Weather Checks and the video versions are on Spotify and YouTube. Audio only is Apple and it's on like um, Amazon Podcasts and a couple other platforms on there. So if you want to see what I'm sharing as far as the cards that I pull, the charts that we're looking at, definitely hop onto the video version. That's a lot easier. But like I always say, as I usually do, I'll do my best to explain what we're looking at when we get into the charts and everything. So the astro weather for mid-June, we're kind of in that shift right now, which is why also I wanted to kind of get ahead of the astro weather check for the full moon and just kind of incorporate some of this mid-June energy as well. We're shifting big time from air and the Gemini energy that we've been in for a few weeks now into cancer into water and this time around it's going to be a really big shift because of some other planetary energies that are involved which we'll get to but rather than just looking at the chart for the full moon i want to look at the chart kind of starting from today leading up to the we'll look at a couple charts leading up to the full moon so what we have happening is we've been in this airy uh curious social gemini energy for a while, we still have four planets in Gemini as of today. And then one by one, they'll kind of start shifting. My door just opened, but I think it's because I have the air conditioner on and the windows open out there, but okay. Um, So it's a big shift from air to water just because each of the planets kind of go like one by one real quickly. And we usually just kind of have the the sun will shift and we get into cancer season and then we have the new moon and the water energy kind of comes in a little bit more slowly. This time around, it's like a rush. It's like a flood. It's like we're taking a cannonball dive <laughs> into the pool, making a big splash and kind of staying under for a little while. And so, and we'll get into, when we look at the charts, we have Neptune involved this time. We covered the Saturnian energy that was present in the last Astro Weather Check for the Gemini New Moon earlier this month. So with Neptune, it gets into that more like introspective, watery, sensing feeling. Like think of Neptune, God of the sea, the ocean, and all the things that are underneath the surface and the currents that we can't quite see. So we're getting into dream realms, intuition, spirituality. There is a lot of that kind of energy infused into our personal planets. So the sun, Mercury, Venus, and the moon, um, as we were bleeding up into this week, up to the full moon on next Friday. So I'm giving this this full moon, the tagline dream form part one, because like I said, this is the first of two Capricorn full moons. And this is really important because... This hasn't happened in a while. The last time I can remember two full moons in the same zodiac sign was back in 2021. Now we've had several blue moons. So two full moons in the same calendar month that just happened last year in August. But as far as two full moons in the same zodiac sign, which is called a seasonal full moon for the zodiac season, I can't recall. I don't think I, I'm kind of going on memory on this one. I didn't like dig into the last few years, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't happened since we had two full moons in Aquarius 
in 2021. So in the summer of 2021. And that was a really big deal for me personally. That was uh, right around the, the time that I exited the corporate world. One full moon, it was like one big part of the story. And by the second one, I was out and done. <laughs> so it was really impactful. So if you know where Capricorn is in your chart, kudos do a little bit more deep diving a little bit more deeply into the themes of that space and how this could be like a two-part story for you the other thing that's really interesting with this upcoming series of capricorn full moons is capricorn is ruled by the planet saturn with this first one saturn will be quote-unquote direct and then with the next one saturn will be quote-unquote retrograde so it's like um backpedaling a little bit in the storyline of what's been developing in that part of your chart in your Capricorn house. If you have any planets in Capricorn, it's probably going to be a little bit more impactful. If you have any planets in the other cardinal signs, it'll probably be a little bit more impactful. So Cancer, Capricorn, Libra, and Aries. So if you have any placements in those, kind of think about what I'm saying when we're diving into the chart and looking at things and how this is translating into the lived experience how it has been since January. So we had our Capricorn new moon on January 11th. So that was a magical new moon. It was on 111, which is really cool. And the tagline that I gave it was, I think it was your untapped inner mystic. I have it right here. Yep. Your untapped, it, um, your untapped inner magic. So think about that. How has your relationship to your own magic transformed since January? How is it kind of culminating in maybe a couple ways now? How has your relationship to your own spirituality, to your own mortality, to your own belief system changed or developed since then? And this is really kind of getting back to the root of kind of all the underlying energy of all of this is the planet Saturn being in the sign of Pisces and getting really close to the planet Neptune that's been in Pisces for a really long time now. But it's sitting at the end of the Zodiac and we'll look at that. So the last degree of the Zodiac is like a culmination of all the other degrees. So from zero Aries all the way to 29 Pisces, it's like our whole story of like how we work through our lives through this experience to the ultimate point of transcendence when we go back to the spirit world. So it's like the fool's journey to an extent. You can akin, it's like akin to the, that whole story in the tarot from, you know, the fool to the end. Like, how does this translate? And how is this, like, I, I'm always into the lived experience of it. So this is a really important time, mid, mid June. And then with these two full moons to really pay very close attention and kind of reflect back, not only to the new moon on 111 this year, but since Saturn has been in the sign of Pisces. So that would be March of last year. Saturn spends roughly two and a half years in every sign. And this energy with Saturn and Pisces has been very much about bringing form to a vision, bringing form to a dream, and the action steps that we've put in place and the responsibilities that we've taken along the way, and how our own personal authority has been affected by all of this. And answers to questions that we may have had for a long time about spirituality, about religion, or how we integrate any of that into our lives in general. Like I said, it's the unseen realms. It's things that we can sense, but we can't really see. That's what Neptune's in charge of. Neptune is the modern ruler of the sign of Pisces. So Neptune's very involved in the energy leading up to the full moon next Friday. So points for reflection, things to think about. Definitely, if you're doing any kind of deeper dive into this in your own chart, really think about what was going on January of this year and what's materialized since then. When we have the moon in the sign of Capricorn, it's not its happiest, I guess you could say. The only sign that the moon rules is the sign of Cancer, and that's opposite the sign of Capricorn. So when the moon is in the sign opposite that it rules, it's playing by Saturn's rules rather than its own. So the moon... It doesn't want to play by Saturn's rules. Saturn is so serious and it's reality and it's concrete things and like authority. And like I always say, it's like getting called to the principal's office when we have a Saturn lesson kind of happening in our lives. And the moon just wants to feel and sense and intuit and take care of things. And 
it's just a very different dynamic. So now that we have two full moons happening in that space, it's an interesting thing. And just make sure you're getting really deeply in touch with your feelings at this time too. The, with full moons, there's always a release of some sort. Emotions will rise to the surface. And with the Capricorn energy, we kind of just want to like maybe push through them a little bit. But we're all, our, all, our job is always in this human experience to feel our feelings. So just make sure that that's kind of part of the inner working of the process that's developing right now, especially with it being in Saturn's, under Saturn's guide or, or rules, like I said. So important. Today is, like I said, Friday the 14th. So we have a little bit of momentum kind of on our side for today, kind of moving into the energy with um, today. We'll look at the chart momentarily. Today is a Mercury Kazemi right around 12, 1232 PM here on the East coast. So what that means is we're at the midpoint of the Mercury cycle that started right after the solar eclipse back in April. And I talked about this last time with the Venus cycle. So it's pretty much the same thing. We started the cycle when Mercury was retrograde in, in Aries in April, in mid-April. And now we're halfway there. So also think about how your mindset has changed, how your perspective has changed, any new ideas or information that kind of got seated in your consciousness then, and how they're like kind of halfway on their way to culminating in your life. So the end of this cycle will be when the next Mercury retrograde happens. I believe it's in July. So that, another food for thought, and it's in Gemini. So it's a Mercury ruled sign. So it's in its home. It's in its, where it functions really easily and well. And then we just had our first quarter square of the moon yesterday in the sign of Virgo, which is the other Mercury ruled sign. So today's kind of the day to like, really, you know, think about things, have that mental agility going and, organization going and maybe you just like start jotting out and thinking about things ahead of the shift that we're going to have into the water, into the feelings. So now's the time to like do the journaling, do the writing, do the thinking. And then as we start shifting, it'll be more like, okay, that's time to do the feeling now. So today's a great day to get organized, get your thoughts in order, any projects that you have, like this is a good day for me to be doing this too, because I feel energetic and talkative at the moment, which is perfect. So just, uh, yeah, move forward with it from today. But just remember, it's going to be a very different energy. It'll be more internal, more feeling. The full moons are going to be interesting. We have the first one next Friday, the 21st at 9.07 p.m. here on the East Coast. And then the second one will be on July 21st. So just kind of giving you the timeline as well as moving into this mid-June energy and then carrying that forward through cancer season. That's where we're at with the full moons. So let's look at the charts. I'm kind of going to step through these uh, in a little bit of a different way than I usually do. So we're going to look at the chart for today. And then we'll kind of go like day by day leading up to the full moon. I feel like it's important to cover this because having the visual, if you kind of know what you're looking at, if you're into astrology and look at charts and stuff, like this will give you a good underlying, like where are things at? How are they shifting? What are we looking at? And then as always in the middle, we have the, the lines that show the energetics between the planets. So the blues are the harmonious flows, the reds are the squares, the things that are a little bit more challenging. So I said in the last Astro Weather Check that as we move into this energy in June, cue the squares. And we've been in a cue the squares moment for pretty much the entire week. And we were in a cue the squares moment at that new moon on June 6th as well. So that was square to Saturn. Now we kicked off this week with um, Mars squaring Pluto. So if you felt any, like, I, I always call it like gritty, grittiness to the energy. If you felt irritated, angry for a reason that you couldn't quite put your finger on, if any kind of quote unquote ugly truth rose to the surface earlier this week, if you had to take action on something that just needed to fall away, that was the energy we were under in the beginning of the week. And that was because we had Mars square Pluto. Mars and Pluto came together back in February, mid-February. So now we're like, you know, on a 
few months later, a journey into that whole story. And that happened in Aquarius. So if you know where that is in your chart, you can kind of think back to what was going on then, mid-February, and what happened earlier this week, if there was any kind of challenge to something or an action that finally came from something that's been brewing since then, that's the energy we were under and that's why. So here we are today, 12.32 p.m. Like I said, Mercury Kazemi. Kazemi just means the planets in the heart of the sun. Mercury is on the other side of the sun with Venus. So both still invisible. Like I said, we still have four planets in the sign of Gemini, Jupiter, Mercury, the sun, and Venus. Mercury and Venus are having a little secret meeting behind the sun. We can't see them. There's something going on. Their, their um, themes are getting seated with the consciousness of the sun. So that usually translates to some kind of seed being planted in our own consciousness as well. So our thoughts, our perspective, friendships, travel, finances related to Mercury, and then connection to everything we love and value, relationships with Venus. So there's something brewing back here that we have we're not going to quite put our finger on for a little while. So we have that happening today. And then let's just go kind of day by day. I have it in my notes here too. So on the 16th, which is two days from now, Mercury and Venus shipped to the very end of the sign of Gemini. The sun's kind of shortly behind them, which squares Neptune. So you can see this several harsh red lines right here. This is our square. Gemini squares Pisces. The planets will square Neptune as, as they shift out of Gemini into the sign of Cancer. So like I said, when we're talking about Neptune, it's the unseen. It's the things that we can feel, but we can't quite see or touch. We can sense them, but we don't really know what's there. Neptunian energy can be very confusing. For that reason, Neptune's very much related to our, our dreams, our intuitions, our spirituality, very much related to immunity and there's a lot of things under Neptune's realm. So like creativity, movies, music, creative projects, that kind of thing. So just think about how this is feeling as we move into the weekend, this will be Sunday, so Father's Day. Think about challenges to your values, your mindset and perspective coming from, I don't know how it shows up, people, places, your own thoughts, whatever. It just might feel a little confusing. It might feel a little murky. Neptune's like fog or mist, like we know that there's something beyond it, but we can't see it. So that's why it can feel a little confusing. Clarity will come, but in the moment, in these, in the next week, as we have these squares happening, just feel through it. Trust your intuition. Trust your body. Our bodies are beautiful sources of information that we're kind of conditioned to, to second guess kind of put that second guessing away for the next week and just go with what you're feeling. If you get an intuition about something that doesn't feel right, don't go with it. Don't do it. If you have a feeling in your body of like stranger danger, or you get that gut reaction to something that's said or a person or a, an experience, something roll with it. There's a challenge there for a reason. And the challenge is for us to get really curious about it but also listen to what our intuition and to our bodies are telling us because that is usually the truth. So that's how to work with the squares that are coming. And then the next day, one by one, Mercury and Venus will shift into Cancer. They actually come together exactly, which I don't can't remember the last time we had a Venus-Mercury conjunction, but we'll have one at zero degrees of Cancer on the 17th. And then shortly after that, we have the solstice on the 20th. So just take a look at this real quick. You can see it. 
Mercury and Venus come together at zero degrees of Cancer. So that's the, the first degree of a sign. That's a very important thing. Think about where that's happening in your chart. If you know where your Cancer space is, if you have any planets there, if they're happening on like say your sun or something like that, pay very close attention to that. But this is where we start getting into the, the cannonball dive <laughs> into the pool. Out of the water, into the, the, out of the air, into the water. So it's going to feel different. It's going to shift. It's a time to really, the Cancerian energy is very maternal, very intuitive. Think of the moon. And it's just, uh, we might be feeling a little bit more, sensing a little bit more, maybe wanting a little bit more time alone. Spending time with family on Father's Day, depending on how that looks for you, can be a good thing or maybe not. If it's not something that is favorable for you, maybe opt out. You might want to feel like you just want some alone time, some quiet time at home, some personal, more personal space for sure. And just really pay very close attention to your emotions and your feelings and maybe where you have a tendency to hold back your feelings a little bit. Like if you need to be alone in a space to emote and put your emotion in motion, do that. This is a really good time for that. So this is where we're getting into, like this is gonna build and build and build up until the full moon. So we have that. And then on the 20th, the sun will shift. So the summer solstice here in the Northern hemisphere, let's go a little bit farther than that. I think it's around 5 p.m. maybe. Sorry, the chart switched, <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> so um, right around 5 p.m. on the 20th. So on Thursday, we have the sun shifting into Cancer. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, that is our summer solstice, longest day of the year. Sun shifts in, and then the next day we have the full moon. So let's look at the chart for that, because that also is a very interesting square to Neptune. It's 9.07 p.m. Oh, shit, what happened? Oh, <laughs> I accidentally went to 20,244. 20, Hang on, we'll get our planets back in a second. What the hell happened there? Okay, here we go. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like, I don't, the software can't even predict what's going to happen 20,000 years <laughs> or whatever too funny. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So this is our chart for our full moon. As you can see, the sun is right here at one degree of cancer and the moon is in the opposite sign. Full moon is always in opposition of the sun and the moon over here, moon at one degree of Capricorn. The interesting thing here is just before the sun shifts into cancer, it will also square Neptune. That only happens twice a year. So that brings in not just our mindset and our relationships and values, it brings in our identity and our consciousness. That's what the sun represents, our inner light, our spark, our personal power, survival. So that can bring even more feelings of confusion. Like, where am I in all of this? What is my place? Like, what am I doing here? What's my purpose? So that kind of emotions infused as well on the 20th before the sun shifts in like the, the you know earlier part of the day before 5 p.m we have that kind of brewing as well and then we have the full moon so like i said full moon ruled by saturn saturn rules the sign of capricorn down here within 10 degrees now of neptune so this is the farthest saturn has gotten through pisces so far since it shifted in back in march of last year this is the farthest Neptune has gotten into Pisces in all of our lifetimes. And that shifted in, I think it was 2011 or 2012 when Neptune shifted into Pisces. So these two coming together is a big deal. This is something we're going to be covering in future astro weather checks as they get closer and closer. So like I said, we have both of them, quote unquote, direct at the time of this first Capricorn full moon. By the end of the month, Saturn will start retrograde journey and then shortly after Neptune will as well. And then during the next full moon, they'll both be backwards, quote unquote backwards from that perspective. So it's a process and how the full moons are going to play out. 
and we'll get, you know, as, as we get through the lived experience more and more, we'll do future astro weather checks and we'll do one, like I said, for the Cancer New Moon and for the second Capricorn full moon. But that's why I said this is it's the tagline Dream Form Part One. So then as we go kind of on the other side of the full moon, we have the nodal axis starts getting involved. As things start going through Cancer one by one, they will square the nodal axis. So that always brings in like the lessons and the feelings of more so like, what am I doing here? How, how have I been working with this energy since July of last year when the nodes shifted into Aries and Libra? And we've covered that in, in past astro weather checks. And I'll include the one for the new moon from January 11th in the episode description for today as well. So you can kind of like get a better idea of what that new moon was all about and how we've come, you know, the journey that we've come to at this culminate, first culmination point with the first full moon on the 21st. So it will be, I'll have, I already wrote, actually already wrote the horoscopes for that week. I want to get everything kind of done before I take some time off next week. So that'll be a good resource for you as a more personal delivery of the information based on your rising sign for how the square to the nodal axis will be showing up in your life. The horoscopes for the full moon are already written. And like I said, I'll put that in the episode description for today. So we have some interesting energy kind of going on from now until the end of the month and beyond into July. The one cool thing is our lunar cycle will go back to normal with the second full moon, which will be pretty cool. So after this one, it kind of resets back to the way that it should be. So what I mean by that is new moon in one sign and then the full moon happening in the opposite sign. So like, for example, the second full moon will have the new moon in Cancer in early July and the Capricorn full moon in on July 21st. And that's the way the lunar cycle usually works. We have the new moon and then the full moon in the opposite sign. So Cancer to Capricorn. We've been backwards a little bit for over a year now. We had a um, two new moons. Let me stop the share. We had two new moons back in April of last year in Aries. And that threw us off. So since then, we've been having a new moon and then the full moon and not the opposite sign. So for example, we had the new moon in Taurus back in early May, and then we had the full moon in Sagittarius. It should have been in Scorpio. So see what I mean? Taurus and Scorpio are opposite Gemini and uh, Sagittarius are opposite. So we had the, the new moon back in early June in, Sag in Gemini, and now we're having a full moon in Capricorn. Should have been in Sagittarius. Just that that's the way the lunar cycle usually works. But sometimes it gets thrown off, like when we have two new moons in the same sign or something like that. So with the one in July, we'll be back on track. So that's an, also an interesting thing to maybe play with if you want to dive even more deeply and you're a little bit more familiar with astrology. Think about how the backwardness of the lunar cycle has worked for you. Or how it's kind of brought things to the surface from the new moon to the full moon in a different way for the last over a year um, since April of last year, like I said. So that's also a curious thing. Like we'll catch back up this time. So that'll be pretty cool. And I'm kind of excited for that to kind of go back to normal. It's been an interesting thing. Um, I've definitely been reflecting on that myself in my own way, uh, how that sort of materialized and shifted. But just remember like what we have going on now is like a two-part story. So it'll be like a little confusing and maybe the way things usually culminate from new moon to full moon might not be quite on track or something might come up that is like a, feels like a bump in the road. And then by the second full moon, clarity should come. And then on the other side of that, more clarity should come because the second part of the story will have culminated in some way. So it's just, it's cool. Like, like I, I love when this kind of stuff happens because it's just, you know, it's not the usual thing for discussion. It's, it's food for thought. It's, it's um, 
you know, conversation to have that's not, that's different, which, you know, you know that I love. So, <laughs> so that is that. I hope that that was helpful for you. You can always reach out and ask me questions, leave me feedback, whatever the case, I love to hear from you. And as I'm pulling the cards and we're wrapping up today's Astro Weather Check, I just want to mention that, uh, yes, reach out to me. If you um, have any feedback about the horoscopes in particular, since this is now like third or fourth, this is the fourth edition of them. So I'm getting into a good groove with those. I'm really enjoying writing them. I just got some feedback from different people yesterday. So they've been reading them, you know, for the last three weeks. And they finally told me like, this is resonating really well. And thank you for doing this and that kind of stuff. So please, 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 if you want to let me know, regardless of, you know, what you have to say, I'd love to know what you think, how it's resonating for you. Because this is a new practice for me. And as I told the story in the, transmuting fear becoming Ky Chiron podcast episode that I just did a little while ago. This was extremely divinely guided. And I'll put a link to that episode as well. If you want to hear the story of how I came to write horoscopes for sure local news magazine, <laughs> it's an interesting one. So yeah, it's just, I'm having fun. People seem to be receiving it well, um, most people. <laughs> so um, ursaalchemy at gmail.com is how to get in touch with me to leave feedback about the astro weather check, the horoscopes, anything becoming Chiron. If you want to reach out about a reading, anything, U-R-S-A-A-L-C-H-E-M-Y at gmail.com. And that is at the end of every episode description, as well as other ways to get in touch, my services, all of that. So that will be there for you. And you can always just comment on the YouTube um, I usually put some kind of question or poll in, on the Spotify feed for the podcast episodes. So you can answer those questions or engage with me in that way as well. Like I said, now Spotify has a way to leave stars. Uh, you can definitely follow it. Having followers on Spotify really helps me as well. And there's also a way to donate $8.99 per month to this project. So there's a subscription option there for a donation of $8.99 a month to support me financially. And then I'm also curious if I added a $1 or $1.11 a month way to just throw me some bones, like a tip <laughs> as a subscription, that would be like a donation, but like a tip for doing this. Would you do it? You can also answer that question for me by reaching out or commenting. I would love to know because that's something I've been thinking about for a little while. And it's just like, you know, tipping a server or a barista or whatever. So that would be a cool way to support me. That's definitely um, financially pretty easy. I think $1 a month, one eleven a month. So I will receive feedback on that as well and maybe put that plan in motion soon. So there's a way to just subscribe and 12 bucks a year. <laughs> that would help me tremendously. So the two decks that I'm pulling from, these are the decks that I've been using all week for our Tuesday live readings, as well as a couple other cards sessions that I pulled. Sonia Choquette's Ask Your Guides. This is a great book of hers and a great way to get more in touch with your intuition, but also your team spirit, as I call them. So your team of dragons, angels, guides, ancestors, starseed beings, planets, the planets especially. As you know, I work with them. So <clears throat> I'm pulling from this deck this week. This aligns with the Neptunian energy that we have. And then Soul's Journey Lesson Cards. You know, I always pull from this deck when we have Saturnian energy involved. Just, I feel like this deck just really aligns with that energy, like just kind of bringing a reality piece to the situation, whatever it is, whatever the card is speaking to. And because we have the full moon being ruled by Saturn, I felt that it was appropriate. And because Neptune and Saturn are so close together now, pulling these two resources and sources of you know information, I think together is pretty cool. And it just helps to bring in the spirituality, but also the reality. So our card for, oh, uh, this came up. This came up earlier this week also. Interesting. So the warrior guide card, competition, card number 17, from Ask Your Guides. 
So if you're watching the video feed, let me get my mouse out of the way. If you're watching the video version, you can see the card. It's all red pretty much. So this reminds me of Mars energy. And this is kind of where we were at earlier this week. So, and this also brings me back to the messages that always come through when I use the Peace Warrior deck. And that's where we're at as far as the nodal axis being in Libra and Aries. And I've discussed that. So where can you be your own warrior in this energy, but bring an element of peace to it? Or maybe do it in a different way where you're transmuting energy in some way and taking the higher road or, or staying in the higher vibration. So let's read what the book has to say on this one. It's card number 17. So these are guides that you can tap into for help with something. Like I said, if you were feeling a little angry or irritated or whatever earlier this week, we had that grittiness in the energy that's kind of carried forward into the week anyway. And now we have all these emotions kind of brewing on top of it. So it can be overwhelming. So where can you dispel that information a little or that those feelings a little bit better by tapping into your team spirit and your warrior guides so this the message on this card or for this card from the book strife arguments conflicts battle this is a time of conflict and challenge pure and simple no matter how you look at it confrontation and discord are on the horizon. Others don't agree with you or see your perspective, and they don't intend to cooperate with you in any way. This could surface in such serious ways as legal battles, divorce proceedings, and contract negotiations. Or it could just be an impulse with a spouse over a raised toilet seat. We all, we've all been there. Whatever the issue, there's no immediate or easy resolution. You've attracted a worthy opponent, so prepare to go the distance. This is not to assume, however, that such combative scenarios are always a bad thing. Your warrior guides are present to enlighten you about the benefits of sparring with others. Competition brings out your best and unleashes your passion and commitment in what you believe in. It develops your strength and prevents you from being victimized or manipulated by others. And it teaches you the need to respect others too and not mindlessly impose your will on them. Your warrior guides suggest that when you do battle with others, it's best to fight fairly and learn from the conflict. Don't compete just to let off steam. Fight for progress and higher understanding for all concerned rather than just being difficult to get your own way. Hidden within the drama of battle and competition are the seeds for true understanding and compassion. The best spiritual warriors always strive for a win-win outcome. Your warrior guides suggest that you embrace the battles at hand to find your strength and reach for growth. Fight the good fight with your adversaries, but pray for divine justice to prevail, not just your personal version of justice. Their message, fight fair, but concede when you are in the wrong. Wow. Important, important message, I think moving into this energy in particular, because when we're swimming in the deep and we're going through these emotions and whatever comes up, like I said, we have Father's Day kind of plugged into all of this. It can bring up some stuff, however that Hallmark holiday looks for you. Families get together. Like I'm going into a week where I'm going to be with my family for a whole week. And I'm very much looking forward to it. But there are some things that speak to, I think this card is a good message for me too. There are some things that are, you know, surrounding the whole, like I have a little, not anxiety, but nervous anticipation of um, us all being in the same space together. Because, you know, everyone has different opinions and ideas and beliefs and whatever. Like I'm 
I'm doing my best to always keep the peace. I am a Libra sun after all, like, as you all know, but I have discovered my inner warrior in a big way over the last several years. And I have had to act on that and separate and, and put, you know, relationships on pause and, and that all that kind of stuff. And it's okay. Remember, take the higher road, but also remember the lesson and don't lose your shit. That's the most important thing. And if you do, figure out a better way to do it than, than projecting onto other people. When we get into this Cancerian energy and some of the, the anger and things that can come up with it, that this card is speaking to, one, tap into your team and ask for guidance. But two, like we have a great opportunity to learn how we best release energy out of our body through exercise and movement surfing like in the northern hemisphere here we're in the summer season like we can get out like play some basketball go for a swim go for a run go for a walk take that energy and move it forward and out of your body yourself rather than punching something or getting in a fight whether it's a verbal fight or a physical fight there are higher vibration ways to move this and just help ourselves help help you help you but also to not create more conflict where it doesn't need to be. It's a really good, Cancerian energy is very much all about emotional maturity also and taking that moodiness and figuring out for yourself what it's all about, like going within, doing the shadow work and remembering what this card is saying. So very good card for the energy that we're moving into, especially with squares. Squares get gritty and <laughs> squares get challenging. That's the whole point to to force some kind of action where we're learning a lesson but always remembering just to try to stay in the higher vibration of it remembering the lesson for yourself and you like not to project onto others like their lesson is theirs and do your best so there's that and then the soul's journey lesson card for the saturnian energy that's coming in Yeah, stop there. Patience. I accept that everything happens in divine order. I'm pretty sure I pulled these two cards together earlier this week. So, wow. So they're not just coming through for the person that that reading is for, but for everybody, which is really cool when these ha things happen. So patience is card or page number 76 in the book. And I always say that I pay attention to the colors of these cards in this deck in particular. So this is all mostly yellow. So solar plexus, but then, and that's our you know personal power chakra, the energy of the sun and Mars to, to an extent also. But look how it sort of like incorporates everything too, but in a different way. So we take our personal power, our personal authority, Saturn, and what the warrior card was saying, remember our patience, take a beat, take a breath, step outside, leave if you have to and come back. I don't know. And it'll filter into the rest of our chakras to an extent. So we pretty much have all the other colors here. Green is heart. The lighter blue is our throat. We have our root. We have our solar plexus, we have purple, we have our crown. So our personal power, when we dive into that in a harmonious way, in a high vibration way, can help kind of us balance out the rest of our energy. So just remember patience. I accept that everything happens in divine order. So there's that also. Remember how this is a two-part story in the general theme of the Astro Weather Check that we already discussed. Have some patience. And I, I get more specific in the horoscopes so you can read for your rising sign and you'll see what this is talking about because I definitely pulled all of that into what I wrote for the set for today that was released yesterday, next week, and the following week. So definitely coming into play. And then from the book, Earth has become a place of instant gratification. You must focus on the maxim it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. 
this card has come to you because you need to learn the joy of anticipation. The process of doing is so rich in lessons, but when you concentrate only on the goal, those experiences are disregarded. Life is an unfolding, and the more patience you practice, the more you will let the universal energy celebrate itself through you and bring the experiences and situations your soul requires. You need to learn that there is a rhythm to everything in the universe. And the more you are living with patience, the more aware you are of the lessons your soul is studying. You are on a path. There are signposts. If you are speeding down the path, you will miss the little miracles and treasures that have been placed there. I love that. I think this really does also speak to the reflection to the new moon back in January. So January 11th, it was on 111, which is so cool. Uh, your untapped inner magic is what I taglined it. So there's an energy with that too, with Capricorn. I always talk about how I feel like Capricorn is misrepresented to an extent. And I feel like it does relate very much to our inner mystic and being a boss of our own magic and intuition and like the Mary Poppins energy is what I relate it to. So there's that part too. So maybe listen back to the one from January and then maybe re-listen to this one or just kind of think about the cards that came out or the messages that I'm talking about and how that is, is culminating in a big way over the next, over a month. So that is it for today. We will wrap up at this point. Um, like I said, feedback is always welcome. I'd love to hear from you. This will be a bonus episode in the Becoming Chiron podcast feed. Like I said, video versions on Spotify, as well as our Sea Goddess Healing Arts YouTube. And I will be back with you for sure before the Cancer New Moon, possibly before with another Becoming Chiron. If the uh, emotion starts to reveal itself to me, I will record uh, episode two of season four at that point. And then until next time, just sending all of my love and strength and personal power to stay in the higher volume. Remember to be a maverick. Bye.